I appreciate Senator Blackburn's generosity, and thank you, Madam uh, Chairwoman. Let me start by saying something I rarely say, and, and Senator Whitehouse is on his way out, but I agree, agree emphatically and 100% with Senator Whitehouse. And you want to limit that a little bit, or is that a general proposition? I, I, I'm going to specify the context, because it, that, that is not a frequent sentiment. But the Department of Justice has been abysmal in responding to this committee's inquiries. I've been in the Senate 10 years. The Department of Justice was abysmal under President Obama. It remained abysmal under President Trump. And if anything, it has gotten worse under President Biden. There's a culture at DOJ, an arrogance that believes the department is not subject to oversight from this Congress, and there is a culture of either ignoring letters or responding with dismissive boilerplate that, in my view, demonstrates a contempt not just for Congress but for the American people. And I ask you to carry that message back to DOJ because I think DOJ is failing badly and Senator Whitehouse deserves to have his letters answered and so does every other senator here with candor and honesty. Thank you, Senator. I commit um, to make sure that I relay that message exactly as you've delivered it with the seriousness uh, that it deserves. I, I appreciate that. Chairwoman Khan, I want to turn to the controversy around the use of the so-called zombie votes at the FTC. As you know, this process allows an outgoing FTC commissioner to, quote, vote on items before the commission, even after that commissioner has left the commission. In my view, the practice is plainly illegal, and it jeopardizes the legality of any action of the commission taken pursuant to this illegal process. The practice is so absurd that earlier this year, the Senate Commerce Committee marked up a bill giving the FTC Section 13, uh, on giving the FTC 13B authority, the Committee on a Voice Vote incorporated Senator Moran's bill to prohibit zombie voting. So we had Republicans and Democrats came together and said, this is not an agency functioning properly if an absent commissioner is casting votes on matters he or she is no longer on the commission to cast votes on. And worse yet, we still know very little about this practice under your tenure. What we do know comes almost exclusively from public reporting because you have not been informing Congress about what is happening. And so I want to start with some basics. Outside of the 1984 policy guidance, a, a memo written by the FTC General Counsel's Office, which you and the FTC have cited in response to questions about former Commissioner Chopra's zombie votes, what other formal guidance in terms of memos, circulars, handbooks, et cetera, exist regarding the Commission's use of zombie votes? Thanks for the question. That's the primary document. Um, as you noted, this practice was initiated in the 1980s under Chair Miller. Um, there was various guidance at that time, and so we followed course. Prior to your tenure, has a zombie vote ever used to break a tie and be the decisive vote on the commission? I'd have to go back and see how it was done in the 80s. But you uh, but can't cite votes, any instance to this committee today? Not specifically off the top of my head. I will say there was a lot of inquiry that we received about this, and we were able to send back information to the Senate. We'll make sure that you and your team have that information as well. Will you provide unredacted copies of all the documents that have been prepared or that exist concerning zombie votes at the commission? Uh, subject to checking with our general counsel, we'll certainly provide you what, what we can. Well, let me be clear, because I imagine you could come back and give all sorts of exceptions, like we have litigation over this. Let me remind you of, of what I just visited with, with Mr. Cantor about, which is the United States Senate is not the general public. Litigation exceptions don't exist for the United States Senate, and we have an oversight responsibility to know what's happening at the commission. Absolutely. And in as much as we're able to provide that type of non-public information in non-public settings, we will do so. I do want to clarify one thing about these votes. Any commissioner at any moment in time can cast a vote on something unless that vote receives a second 
that vote expires within 30 days. So the idea that somehow- But, but, but if they're not a commissioner anymore, it's qualitatively different than when a sitting, a sitting commissioner casts a proxy vote. Let me dig into the details on your use of former Commissioner Chopra's zombie vote, specifically between October 12th, when Mr. Chopra was sworn in as the head of the CFPB, and May 16th, 2022, when Mr. Bodoya was sworn in as the fifth commissioner. How many former Commissioner Chopra's zombie votes did you use? I'd have to confirm the number, but again, absent these votes being seconded, they were not. So let me in try effect. again. How, how many votes did you use? Again, I want to confirm, but it was it did not affect any enforcement action. I can confirm for you. Um, there have, may have been a policy statement or so, but it was certainly under five. So you're five. saying there were no zombie votes on any enforcement actions. As far as I'm aware, but again, we're happy to confirm that. But you don't have the exact number. Did you anticipate this line of questioning? So again, we're happy to confirm and, and get back to you. I would hate to misstate something publicly. Well, let me ask one final question, which is, I'm an alumnus of the FTC. I think it is a remarkable institution that's done a lot of good. Under your tenure, morale at the agency has plummeted. Um, I have here a letter from 16 alums of the FTC expressing deep concern about the politicization of the commission and the resulting uh, flight of senior staff from the FTC and the deeply diminished morale. And I'd ask unanimous consent that this letter be entered into the record. Without objection. And I would ask you, given the public reports of deep, deep, dissatisfaction within the commission, do you think the full Judiciary Committee, which has jurisdiction over the committee, needs to do an oversight hearing with all of the commissioners? We have not done one as long as the Democrats have had a majority on this committee. I defer to the committee, but I'm always happy to appear before you all for any oversight. Well, I look forward to it, if not this year, then early next year.